Okay, welcome to another video tutorial uh, coming towards the end of this video tutorial for the baguette ordering system using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So the last thing we did was we created an order form and we designed it. It has the customer name, the standard filling, the extra filling, the salad choice, and the baguette size and baguette bread. So today what we're going to do in this video tutorial is to start putting those text boxes and drop down boxes over here so we can allow the customer to place the order. We will also have an order link, an order link you can say, or an order text label that will be clickable so the user can click on it and download their order that will be saved to the system, which the administrator can then upload to view what their order is. And also the is there is going to be a home link or home. I'm going to be using links now. So I'm going to show you how to make a link clickable instead of a button that you click on the home and it takes you back to the home page again. So it takes the user back there. So what I want you to do is first, please click on the order. So we're going to be working on putting those text boxes and uh, drop down boxes over here. We definitely need to have a function in a JavaScript file because we're going to be taking that information that the user's entering in those text boxes and drop down boxes and we're going to download it. So first things first, make sure you click on your order.html file. So you should find it on the left from the previous tutorial. The next thing is you notice that we already put the name of, well, we have our CSS for this uh, page, which is the background picture. And the next thing we want to do is to come into the body because we're going to start putting in um, the first thing, which is the text box for the user to enter the name. So to do that, we're going to be using the paragraph tag. And so we're going to open up paragraph tag and then we're going to open up input tag, obviously. OK, so that way we can allow the user, we can create this text box that the user can enter. So it's called an input, input type. We're going to give it the name as um, the name of this input as just name because it will just be the name. And the most important thing is the ID, which is like the variable name that we're going to be using in our JavaScript file so we can be able to get the name of this uh, customer. Then we're going to be specifying that this will work for us to be able to get the name of the customer. We have to connect this page, this HTML page to our JavaScript file. So we're going to say on change. Once the customer enters in their name, we're going to be using this my function. I'm going to call it my function, but we can actually call it. Um, we can call it. Um, we can call it really anything. We can just call it order, or you can call it customer order. And that's the name of our function. And don't forget to put circular brackets in there, of course. And then now we come into the style of this text box. So for the style, you would specify the design of it. So we're going to specify like the positioning. This is very important. Where do we want to position it? So very similar to the previous projects that we've been working about, we've been working on since. So I'm putting it on a relative positioning because I will be moving the X and Y coordinates. So I don't want it to be fixed. It's relative. So it's going to be shifting based on my specification. For the left side, which means towards the... Uh, Towards the x coordinate on the left, we are going to, towards the x coordinate basically, we're going to set it to 450 pixels. And then, of course, we have towards the top, so you can say more vertical set placing of this text box. I'm going to make it to 230 pixels. And then, of course, we put a semicolon. And now I'm going to be specifying the background color that we're going to be using. So I'll give a space and write background color for my text box. Um, so I'm going to specify, obviously, uh, yellow. I just want the background color for the text box to be yellow, but you can change the color if you want. So that's up to you. So I'm specifying it as yellow. And now I'm going to put in the width as well. So we're going to also specify the width. So the width of the text box, how long do we want it? Since it's just the name of the customer, we're just going to give it a width of 190 pixels, which is pretty okay. Then we're going to specify the height as well. And so the height could be something like 35 pixels. And then finally, I'm going to specify the font size of the text that the, cust the customer or the player is going to, the user is going to be writing in the text box, how big should the text appear. So I'm going to be giving it about 14 pixels. Uh, PT, so that not pixels, but like 14 PT, like size in terms of size. So, and then I'll close this with a semicolon, and that's pretty much it 
for the input. So we've already put in the input. The next thing to do now is to put in the, um, the drop-down box because we have the input text box will be for the customer name. And then remember that we also have to put the drop-down for the standard filling and the extra filling. That's also going to be a drop-down. And we're making a drop-down because it's sort of like that. We're trying to restrict the user from typing or entering anything that is not available. Um, obviously, we have specified what we have available. The user has been able to see the screens for the menu up until this page. So they know what kind of uh, fillings are available, what kind of salad options are available, what kind of bread types are available. And so they are restricted to selecting just those from this, this drop down text box, uh, drop down box. So that's why it's really important. We're putting drop downs, so we're restricting them. So they don't just put anything that the system or that our shop does not offer. So our system is not going to collect that or it's not going to accept it. But with a drop down, you're restricting them to just choose what's available. Now, we go into the next thing. So the next thing is now to create the drop down for the first one, which is the standard filling. To create a drop drop down, you have to use this uh, this uh, tag, which is called select ID, and then you have to specify what it's going to be. So I'm just going to call it standard filling. So standard underscore filling, and then again, it's going to be making uh, controlled by the function that we're going to have in JavaScript called uh, customer order, just like what we had for the text box, because that's the function that we're going to be using to fetch basically um, all this information. And now we're going to be specifying the size. So we're going to space up right size. Well, style first, which would be where we specify everything else. I could just copy everything from position all the way to like um, background. Well, all the way to everything, really. Just all the way from position. You can copy everything from your previous one all the way to the, um, to the font size that you specified and just paste it in between the quotation marks. And there you have it. And so it's the same format. The only thing that will change, of course, is the um, the positions that would not be the same for left and top. So left is just going to be 450 since it's going to be aligning uh, horizontally on the same in the text box and the drop down will be horizontally aligned. The only thing that's going to change is that it will go further down. So it will be 260 on the Y, so vertically. And the color, I'm also going to set it to yellow. And the size this time, I'm going to make it a bit wider, so make it 200. Uh, pixels and the height a bit bigger again taller 40 pixels and the font size is still going to be 14. Now how do we actually create the drop down? So the drop down is by going to the next line we're going to be creating something called option values and these are where you specify what options you're providing the user when drop down. So the first option I'm going to make it blank the reason is because I don't want anything to show in the beginning so the user gets to choose their own option so I'm going to make it blank, and then, of course, I'm going to close this option value. That's pretty much what you have to do. And the second option, I'm going to either say yes or no. So I'm going to, again, include another option value. So these are all like the things that will be in the drop down. So I'm going to say yes here. Um, and then, of course, I will close this with a yes. So just make sure you're closing your option values. You don't need quotation marks there. <clears throat> so here the value is going to be a yes so they choose the yes and if they choose it that's why I'm saying value equal I can be able to fetch that value from the code we're going to include in the JavaScript and the yes is actually what's going to be showing um, in the drop down so um, so yeah so that's the first one we also have one that's going to be no and pretty much just um, once you type the same thing you can copy paste and just change it to no and then you have to end your select tag because that's what you're using to put the drop down. Now, something I really want to do is I want to put some nice emojis in the drop down just to make the whole you know system more interactive. So I'm going to go search for some emojis. I'm going to search for yes emoji, something that does deals with yes. Um, so let's see what we can find online. You can actually just put it as um, copy it. So I think this is good. I'm going to use this yes here. And then just go there and just paste it in there. So it does really work well. So I'm going to paste it on this yes right here and also paste it on this one as well. So it's just going to appear. This is the one that's going to be appearing as the um, the one that will appear as the yes, like on the drop down. And this one's the one that would be collected as the value yes. So I'm just going to put it closer. <clears throat> and then 
we have so i'll just take this closer it's just that you have to make sure they are displayed in the same way because that's how we will be fetching them in the javascript code and then i'm going to do one for a no so i'm going to look for a no emoji if i can see no thumbs up um no uh thumbs down i guess it's a no that we look for thumbs down I guess we can search a thumbs down. Let's see if I can get something related to a thumbs down. Yeah, this is pretty good. So that means no, and I'm just gonna paste it here and I'll paste it also here. All right, so the first uh, section of our drop down is ready. So we're gonna do the exact same thing for the next one. And the next one is just gonna be the extra filling. So if you look at your form, you can tell. So it's extra filling that's gonna be the next drop down. So what I'm going to do is just copy everything that's here because we're going to kind of use the same things, only changing the coordinates, of course, for the uh, Y value. And I'm just going to paste it here and just change this one to just extra filling. So I'll just call this extra filling. And then everything else would stay same. Um, this would only change on the left. I kind of will reduce the left because it will just go more towards the left now. So I'm not going to make it 450 to not go towards more of the right. I had to do that for the first two, which you will see. Um, but if you know, you just adjust as you go and I've already adjusted. So it's 245 and then the dot, the top, which means it will come down a bit more. Uh, it will go up a little bit more. Sorry, not come down at 350 pixels. Everything else will be the same. So it's background color is still going to be yellow for me. And the width is going to be 200 and the height's 40. And again, the font size of the text that's going to be appearing, which is this, in this case, extra filling options, will be 14 in size. So now we're going to be putting those extra filling options. And remember what we have for the extra filling options. If you don't know, go back to your previous picture um, for extra filling. You just go back to screen filling. We have beef, we have chicken, we have cheese, eggs, tuna, and turkey. So just remember what we have there. So I'm gonna, just going to be putting those values in. So here I'm going to write beef. Obviously, I'm going to go look for uh, an emoji that would fit all of these options. I just want to keep everything kind of same. So here I'm going to write beef. Um, and then I'll just copy paste this one. So I'll just copy that block and then just paste it here. Really, you just have to paste the option values to just change the values you're going to have. So the next one I have is um, chicken. So I'm going to put chicken in here. So remove the beef and then put chicken. Okay, and then here will also be chicken as well. And then I will go ahead and put the next one, which is going to be cheese. So I'll copy again. And then I kind of already pasted it, so I'm just going to paste it. So this one's going to be cheese now. Okay, and then what else do we have? We have a couple more. So we have cheese, we have eggs, tuna, and turkey. So the next one's going to be tuna. Uh -huh. And we are going to change this to tuna. And then we have the next one, which is beef and, of course, turkey. So eggs, tuna. Just make sure I did those. Oh, I haven't done the eggs yet. So I'm going to do the eggs first and then the tuna and then finally the turkey. So eggs and then here's going to be tuna. Okay. And then, of course, we have turkey as well. So just make sure you've put in all of your extra filling options for the user to see. And remember that they've already seen it before. So those are the extra options. There are six of them, extra filling options. So make sure you have six of them. All right, now let's go emoji hunting. So I'm going to look for a beef emoji, something that relates to beef. Um, maybe I could just search, search up meat. Yeah, that's pretty great. I actually want something like this. So I'm just going to copy this icon and this emoji, put it right here. So I wanted to show us the drop down. I'm also going to look for chicken. Okay, so chicken and hit the search bar. This is pretty great. I can also just copy this one. I wish there was like a like a full chicken. Um yeah, there isn't a full. There's only like these ones right here. So you can decide to take that or just use this one. So I'm just going to copy this one and then paste it here for chicken and then paste it over here as well. And then we have cheese as well. So I'm going to check for cheese and search it up. Ooh, this is some nice looking cheese here. 
copy that and then I'll just paste it over here for cheese as well. And oops, I forgot to change these ones. This is really important, guys, that you have to because these this is what's going to be showing on the um what's going to be showing on the drop down. So I'm not giving spacing. You can give spacing if you want. Just make sure whatever you do here, you do it to the other side as well. So now we have some eggs. So I'm going to look for some eggs. Let's go hunt eggs. Um, maybe we can say boiled eggs or white eggs. If I don't see anything, I click to go for white eggs or chicken eggs, maybe. Just something that really just shows me an egg. Okay, this is, well, this is a hatching egg. So, oh, there it is. Brilliant. So I just searched one up, eggs. So I just copy that and I'll just paste it over here and change this one to x so that's what's going to show on our drop down and then change this one to tuna now we just have to search tuna and we have to search turkey so tuna turkey meat so let's go search up tuna hopefully we can find something with the first search Ooh, this looks like nice tuna but i don't know if i can just get tuna on its own without um fish showing so right now it just shows me like Japanese sushi and I just want to get like tuna fish. Maybe I can say tuna fish um, Or maybe I can just say fish slice I'm not sure if I get something like that, you know, just keep searching. Maybe you might get something um, Let's see if I get anything. Okay. What about if I search somewhere else tuna um, emoji Tuna, tuna, I get like most of them are still giving me those that Japanese sushi one. I guess I can just use that one just because to save the time, I'm going to use that one. So I'll just copy it and then go back and paste it over here, even though this does look like a sushi, <laughs> a tuna sushi. So, but anyways, turkey. So the last one is turkey. Hopefully we can get something or I can just use it as, um, I can just use that. I think we got turkey here, but like the actual turkey turkey um i didn't get like the slice so I'm, i think i'm just gonna go copy this one maybe i'm just gonna copy this little emoji here just to make it a little bit different all right so we've done our you know our first drop down and that's gonna be that was for our second drop down actually that was for the extra filling. Now we're gonna do one for the salad choice. And of course we're gonna do one for the baguette size and the baguette bread. So for the salad choice, it's really exactly the same thing. There is no much of a difference. You just have to copy this block again and then just paste it down below. So the block that you just did for the extra filling and I'm going to call this one salad this time. So change the ID because that's really important. It's also going to be using the same function to fetch that information the user is choosing on the form. So, and then everything else stays the same except, of course, the coordinates. So, the coordinates, I'm going to go left at 40 pixels because then it just goes a little bit further to the left a bit more as you go down with more, you know, drop downs. And then the top, I'm going to go with 430 pixels. And the width and everything else stays the same. So the background color is yellow. The width is 200 pixels. The height is 40 pixels. The font size is going to be 14 pixels. So now we're just going to be putting in those options. So for salad, let me go. I'm, I don't need the screen, the filling screen. Now you can open your salad screen because then you want to know what salads you have as options. So here are the salads. There are basically a total of five options. So the first one is cucumber. So I will definitely change this one to cucumber. So just delete this first option. And then the second one is um, lettuce. And then we have tomato. So again, just kind of take out this part and just take it out all the way here. And then we do lettuce. And then we have tomato. So I'm just going to do tomato. I'm going to change the other ones. So never, don't worry about that. I will change them. So this is cucumber. This, of course, is lettuce. And then, of course, we have tomato right here. And then we have, what else do we have? So let's have a look. We have um, bell peppers and we have sweet corn. So this one's going to be the bell peppers. So let's go for bell peppers. And then, of course, we have sweet corn and that's it.
So those are the salad options. So bell peppers. And here I'm just going to take this out and write sweet corn. And this one's also going to be sweet corn. And that's pretty much it. So we don't have any last option. So it's not six, it's five. So I'll take that last one. So let's go search for some nice emojis for cucumber if we can get anything. Ooh, I already got this really cute cucumber. So I'm just going to paste that here and then paste it here. Of course, that's the option that shows on the on the drop down. And then the next one is the lettuce. So I'm looking for lettuce. Just do a search. And I got like a green leafy looking kind of thing. I think I'm going to go with this one. It looks more lettuce-y. So I'll just copy it and then come back and, of course, paste it in here and paste it in here as well. Then I need something tomato. So tomato, let's see what we can find. Found the perfect tomato. So I'm just going to copy that and come back here and paste it like that. And then, of course, I need bell peppers now. If I could get that, that would be great. Or I could get anything related to peppers. Uh, oh, yeah, I did get bell pepper. That's pretty cool. I didn't think I could get that, though. So bell peppers, I'm going to paste it over here. Oops, I don't think I was able to copy that right. Let me see. I did say copy, so no. So it's not working for me when I do copy the bell pepper. Let me see if I can just try copying it directly and if that's going to work. No, it doesn't show, so maybe it doesn't recognize it. So let's just go with a normal pepper and see if that works. So I'm just going to copy this pepper here and then paste it over here. So this one works fine. So I guess I'm just going to use that, even though it looks like a chili pepper rather than a bell pepper. But when you can't find an option, you got to go with what you have. I'm going to go with corn. I did write sweet corn, but it didn't come out. So I'm just going to go with just an ear of corn. So I'll just copy that and then go back here and then just paste it. They get the idea that I'm talking about a corn. So that's it, guys. That is the second. Uh, is that the second or the third? Let's see. That actually is the third drop down. So now we just have to do the baguette size and then we have to do the bread type. All right. So. For the baguette size, we are going to do the same thing, but obviously because there's just two sizes, 30 centimeter and 15 centimeter, then we're just going to copy the, those ones, right? So what I'm going to do is I'll copy this part here. Um, but for the breads, the baguette size, I'm just going to copy just two options, really. Um, so all the way just to two parts and then just paste them down here. And put that in. So one is going to be, I'll just call the size, the name of the ID. And everything st still stays same except, of course, the coordinates. This time it's going to go all the way left. So 160, negative 160. And then the height would also be going up. So 500 pixels. And then, of course, everything, the width will be smaller because this is just a very small option base. But then this one will stay as 40 pixels for the height and the 14 pixels. So here for the size, we know that we the shop only offers two size options. So one is 30 centimeter and one is 15 centimeter. So I'm just going to write that here, 30 centimeter. And then, of course, we have 15 centimeter as well. OK, so 15 centimeter. And that's also going to go here. And that's all. We are done with the size. It's as simple as that. Now we're going to go to the last thing, which is the bread options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy everything that is here. And I'll just paste it for the very last one. So copy everything from here. And then, of course, come down here and paste it. And that's going to be for the type. So I'm just going to call this bread type or just you can call it just type. Um, if you want to be more specific, you can say bread type. And then here we are going to just change the coordinate position. So this will be negative 262. Okay, so not 260, but 262. And then here will be 570. And then everything for the background color stays same. The width is also going to be 100 pixels and 40 pixels height. And everything else stays same. But then the type of bread here, we're going to do white bread. So I like to start with capitalized. So just white bread. You can write a full name. I think that's just going to make more sense. So maybe we can make this a little bit wider to 150. 
Um, so yeah, so white bread, you know, gonna be white bread. You can also even just make it 200 to be honest. So 200, and then here we have the seeded bread. So here I'm gonna write seeded bread. And of course change this one, and you still have to add one more. Because if you go to your bread options, that should be something you should verify by the way. Bread options, you had brown bread. Oh, we do have brown bread. Brown bread, seeded bread, and white bread. So I should have gone in that order. So I just prefer to go in the right order. So I'm going to make this one brown bread. So here, brown. It makes it easier for the users to kind of remember what they saw previously. And then we have seeded bread, and then we have white bread. So that's the only thing. I'm going to copy this part here. And I'm going to... Oops, let me copy it and I want to paste it down below for the um, white bread. So pasting it down here, this now becomes white bread. And of course, this now also becomes white bread. I'm kind of curious to see if there's like an emoji for white bread. I've never tried this before, so I don't know what would be returned as an emoji option. There's just normal bread, so just baguette. Um, you can just use that if you want to just still keep with the whole making everything with an emoji and then you could just, you know, place that there. Um, you're talking about bread anyway, so you can just put that for every single one of them, bread, 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 and to just, you know, add to some sort of interactiveness on the selection. So that is all, guys. That is it. So now we are going to be concentrating on creating the link that would be um, one that would be to basically for them to download. Um, that means to like download their order because eventually once they finish ordering, they should have something that would say um, download or finish, something like that, something that would specify confirm order, something like that. So we want to have a link that would be able to allow them to confirm the order. Once they click confirm, it's going to download the order as a text file, which would kind of be like a if it was more of a database, that is what you would call a database, a back end that saves the customer's order and the administrator can come and upload that to see what the customer had ordered for whatever customer they're looking for. So here we're gonna create, if we wanna create a link instead of a button, we use this A-H-R-E-F, okay? We've used it before, that's like a ref reference. We're gonna reference this to nothing, so we'll just put a hashtag in there. And we're, because we're not really connecting to any website or anything, the ID for this, um, I'm going to give it as download. So that's just the ID. So the ID for this um, particular link. But of course, we want to connect it to, um, we want it to click on download, but we want it to stay on the screen once they click on download or like once they click on confirm order, because that's what we're going to call this link then they would still be on the screen and they would see like a message telling them, thank you for placing the order. So this is the reason why I'm saying on click, once they click, then they should return uh, to the finishing function, which we're gonna make. And this finishing function belongs here in this JavaScript. So I put this for that reason. And then you put a semicolon. And now we are going to do the whole, um, we're gonna be doing the styling thing. So styling, um, what really happens is that everything is going to be same all the way to, we're going to just add a couple extra things. So I'm just going to copy from here, from this part. Actually, I will copy everything that says style. So from the part that starts with style right here. And I'm going to copy all of that all the way to like font. Uh, I don't really need um, font, I need like the style, I need the position, the left, the top, the color of the text and the font. I do need font size actually. So I'm just going to copy all the way to like height and then add stuff in there. So in front of this, I will be putting in my style. There it is. And some of the things that we're going to be changing is the left coordinate. I'm going to make it at 160. So somewhere towards the central right. And then this one, the Y coordinate or horizontally, I mean vertically, will be 600 pixels. I'm also gonna be putting in color. Uh, so I'm not gonna use background color, but rather color. So that means I'm gonna go with color here instead. And that will be the color of my text. 
So color is going to be, I will use purple this time for my text color for this link that I will be creating. Um, and then the font size, um, yeah, so the font size I will specify. So I'm going to take this part out. And now I'm just going to say color. And then I'm just going to do font size. And I will specify the font size to be 25 pixels for the text that's going to appear on the link. The font family, that means like the style of writing. So the font family will be um, courier. So I'm going to write courier here. Okay, so courier like that. And then the background color, which I wanted to do before, but I just erased it because I wanted to do it in, in order so you don't get confused. So here I'm going to make my background color red. And then the width of this link, I'm going to do a width of how wide you want the link to be. So 120 pixels is fine. And then, of course, the height as well. So height of this um, link, I'm going to make it 40 as I did with others. So 40 pixels. And then, of course, close with a double quotation mark. And don't forget to now put in your tag that ends and put in what would be the name of this link? What would you be? What would be the text on the link? So I'm just going to write down confirm order. That's kind of the text that I want on the link. So confirm order and that's it. So we've done the first link. We need another one. So the another one is just going to be home. All right. It's for the home. So once they click on it, it takes them to the home page. So I'm just going to copy the exact same thing, but we are going to be removing some things and making changes to others. So just copy the exact same thing and now just change instead of this blank hashtag, we can, because we're connecting the A R A H R E F basically always just connects to a website. Whenever you want to like click something and it links you to a website, this is where you add this A H R E F because you're creating like a link, like a label. And so because we are creating a link here, but we're not necessarily linking to a website, this is the reason why we put a hashtag where we're supposed to put the website's name. So here we are linking back to web page. Um, and so the web page is the home page that we created, which is .html. The ID is going to be obviously home and everything else, the style, the positioning, uh, we are going to make it at 450 pixels and 600 pixels top. The color is going to be purple. The font size is going to be 20. Um, the font family is going to be career. The background color is just going to be the same. The width and everything will be the same. But of course, the text that will show on this link will be called home. Okay, or you can cut it as home page. Now, the last thing before we test our work is to put in to connect this page to our JavaScript page, because that's the JavaScript that we have commanded here that will be the customer order. So we can be able to fetch all this information that the user is entering and we can make it download get downloaded and saved on the system once the user is finished so now we're going to be creating a javascript that we're going to be using so we have script one script script one and we're going to be calling this one script two so i'll write down so just click on this part that says new file and then i'll say script two dot js hit enter key and now we have our second script so we do need it to connect to this order dot html so here we're going to be connecting this page to the script. So we're going to open tag and then we're going to say, of course, script source. So script source, and then it's going to be equal to quotation marks and it's just going to be script.js. And then of course we have the theme. The theme is going to be a dark theme. So we want it to be just dark. And then the positioning of the script will be bottom right and that's it. So you just have to put the, ta the tag for the script. And now we can actually run this and see how it works. So when we run it, we're going to be starting from the beginning. So we're going to basically go from starting from main page. And one thing to just recall is remember what your username and password is that you set it. If you don't know, go back to your user page. So now I'm going to just start this and click on admin. I mean, user, we haven't yet done the admin section. So I'm going to zoom out a little. Uh, let me try and see if I can zoom out. I want to zoom out a little. So it's more, it's visible enough to see what we're doing. So I'm just going to go by an 80 or no, that was too much. <laughs> Maybe I go by a hundred guys. All right, there it is. Ooh, that was a lot of stretching. So there it is. 
Um, so the username, I already know it's user123, and then password is user123 at. And then click on login. It takes you to the page where you have the order, the filling options. So I, I've already seen that. I'm going to click next. Then I go to the page where I have the salad option. So I'll just click next. We've already done the testing of these buttons before. And now I'm going to go to the bread type pages. Um, that's this one right here and the bread sizes. So I'm going to click next. Now I'm supposed to go to the order form and supposedly see all these drop downs that we've made and text box. So, okay, there it is. Um, there is a slight problem. So we're going to have to adjust a couple of things. 